Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we are making chocolate pudding. And it's a lot easier than you think it would be. Um, so in my pot, I have sugar, cocoa powder, salt, and cornstarch. Cornstarch will be our thickener for, uh, for the pudding. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to whisk it just so it's fully combined. And you'll see that I have some clumps of cocoa powder and maybe have some clumps of uh, sugar. And I actually just wanna like kind of stab them or press them with my whisk. So that's all mixed. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put my heat on low heat. And then I'm going to slowly add my milk in. And as I'm adding my milk, I'm whisking. So what we uh, want to do is we want to heat this milk up, or this mixture I should say. And we're going to do it on a very low heat. So you will need a little bit of patience with this. And you're going to get some muscles because you're going to be whisking the whole time. So the reason that we want to do it low and slow is so we want this to thicken up. We want it to get really nice, thick consistency. And that cornstarch, so I believe that having cornstarch in your, you should have cornstarch in your uh, pantry um, for a myriad of things. For baking, of course, it's great. You can also do a slurry. So a slurry is a thickening agent that you use for uh, sauces and things like that. Um, it's also gluten-free, so there's that. Uh, I also used whole milk. I like using whole milk with my baking. I'm actually gonna turn this down just a little. And I'm going to continue to whisk. And what we are looking for, so again, we are looking for this to thicken up. Once it thickens, it's going to go quick. Um, and we want this to come to a boil uh, where it is kind of popping up at you. Um, and once it's popping up at you, then you'll want to you'll, you'll want to whisk vigorously for two minutes, and that is to cook the cornstarch flavor out. So the whole process from pouring the milk in to whisking it to getting it to that boiling stage will probably take around ten minutes. Again, you want to continue to whisk, making sure not to burn the sugar, not to burn the milk. Eventually, that sugar will dissolve once the milk is heated. Right next to me, I have butter and vanilla, and this is what we are going to flavor with at the end. But I made sure to prep it first. It's called mise, or mise en place. It's a French term. Um, and basically, you have all of your ingredients, all of your measurements in place. And so all you have to do is take and dump. Um, the big rule of thumb when cooking, or especially when baking, is um, measure twice. Always measure twice. Measure twice, cook once. Or measure twice, mix once. Um, and that is because your mind can go other places. It can, it can do many things. And you always want to measure twice and ensure that you have all of your ingredients. Also, if you are unsure of an ingredient, Taste it. I know there there was a. I personally haven't done this knock on wood, but I know people that have done salt instead of sugar in their baking. It's not good. It's really gross. And then you'll also before you get all of this ready, before you before you start your process, you'll also want to get your bowls or your ramekins. I have ramekins uh, that I've set out. Also, but if you don't have ramekins, that's cool. You can do like coffee mugs or small little bowls. And I would set that on a tray because we will refrigerate this so that your product can cool and set. Alright, so whisk this for it does seem like a long time, but I promise it's worth it, it's good. Have a conversation with a friend, all that good stuff. I just talked about my house, so there's that. <laughs> um, 
but now it is boiling and so it is popping up at me it's boiling a lot so i am going to whisk i'm going to whisk for about i've already it started boiling before so i've already been whisking so i'm going to go for maybe a minute to 30 seconds more again whisking vigorously and the type of consistency that we're looking for is called nap head. And it is when you take a spatula, which we'll take one uh, and I'll show you, but take a spatula and you're gonna dip it in and then you run your finger through it. And if it stays, that's good. That's what we want. That's the consistency that we want. And that is called nap head. I wish you guys could smell this because it smells amazing. And again, we are having this boil and whisking it because we are cooking that cornstarch flavor out. All right, so I'm going to shut off my heat, replace my whisk with the spatula. Again, I'm going to dip it so I see that it's sticking to my spatula, running my finger through perfect consistency. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my vanilla and my butter. And I'm going to let this melt. Making sure I'm scraping everywhere. Butter gives it that velvety texture, has a little fat, it's good. And of course the vanilla, um, the vanilla enhances the flavor. When you're making something chocolate, you always want to add vanilla and salt to it, and even coffee sometimes. Um, to my chocolate cakes, I will add coffee. Those three things really enhance the flavor of chocolate, brings it out. So you can do many things as far as transferring into your ramekins. Um, you can take a ladle and you can do it that way. I uh, don't have a steady hand. I'll be the first one to admit that I don't have a steady hand. So I'm going to go the measuring cup route. So I put it in my measuring cup and then I'm going to, because I want clean ramekin, I'm going to pour it in. You can spoon this in if you don't have a ladle. If you don't have a liquid measuring cup, that's totally okay. I would suggest actually investing into a liquid measuring cup. So when you're measuring items, there are dry measuring cups and there are liquid measuring cups. That is a liquid, a dry is actually this right here. I know I had my vanilla in it. My vanilla was already measured out. I just, this was a holding apparatus, but this is a dry measuring cup. recipe and I'll attach it to the video this recipe makes about eight um, you can cut this in half Ooh, spill you can cut this in half and uh, you can go four um, if you want you can take it up and do more than eight again totally up to you if you want um, when it is at this stage, as far as uh, like pouring it into your ramekins, you can take some coarse salt, some flaky salt, put some salt on on, uh, on top, so it's like a salty chocolate. That would be really good. Um, or just after it's cooled, put some whipped cream on it and enjoy. I started by filling my ramekins small and then I'm going back and I'm topping them off. And the reason that I'm doing that, um, I want to make sure that I serve or 
create my servings first, or at least minimal, and then I can add on to it. You can always add. So it's all measured out, and I'm just going to clean up my ramekins. And again, um, earlier I said that you could use like coffee mugs, or you could use small bowls, you could use ramekins if you have them. If you don't want to individually serve it, that is fine. I would say though, um, go ahead and transfer it into a different bowl, not what you cooked in, not your saucepan, but transfer into a different bowl. And then you will want to stir uh, periodically so that you can ensure for even coolness, that it cools down in, in the proper amount of time. Uh, so what I did is I took a piece of plastic wrap and I'm going to Put this over and the reason I'm going to put it over is because when pudding sits in the refrigerator it can develop a skin we don't want that we want it to be nice and smooth so I put a little bit of uh, saran wrap over and this is going to go in the refrigerator for start at two hours and then of course this can uh, stay in your refrigerator if it's properly wrapped for about I always say like five days I mean like look you're going to eat all of this fairly quickly this is not going to sit in your refrigerator so <laughs> um but yeah that's um, some easy chocolate pudding i hope you guys make this uh tell me if you do make it tell me if you jazz it up anyway if you want a little bit more texture add some um add some oh you know what would be really good in this that i like just thought about uh toasted hazelnuts or pecans or something like that to add texture to it that would be like really good make sure to toast the the nuts any nuts that you use because the toasted nuts are, are better uh, for flavor profile so again I hope you make this I hope you enjoyed this video keep on social distancing flattening the curve tell your family that you love them tell your friends that you love them and I'll see you next time thanks